Hey guys, welcome to my second episode of No Break All Bucket Podcast. I have the legendary Chuck Swirsky here, He's former play-by-play commentator for the Toronto Raptors and now current play-by-play commentator for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Chuck, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. Um, so like I said before, I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to interview yourself. Um, it really is an honor. You know, you've been in the NBA uh for nearly 20 plus years now. Uh, so it's definitely a career that um, that I want to, to look into, you know, uh, and get more information about. So the Absolutely. first question I have, yeah, the first question I have for you is what got you into Chicago sports, like in general, even though, you know, you're not from Chicago. I was no. kind of curious about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you know, in the broadcast business, um, we go where the job is, where the opportunity is, right. and I did just that. It seems like yesterday, but it was over 40 <laughs> years ago that I came yeah. to Chicago. I was uh, broadcasting, doing a talk show mm-hmm. in Columbus, Ohio, okay. and I got a call completely out of the blue, unexpected, mm-hmm. and they said, we'd like you to come to Chicago for an interview. I had no idea of the station, no idea of the responsibilities. I flew up. The interview was about 20 minutes and I, I turned around, went back home, thought, well, that was nice. Yeah. I was in Chicago for all of about five hours right? coming and going from O'Hare. Next thing I know I'm doing seven to 11 Monday through Friday at WCFL uh, in a rather strange and twisted, bizarre format where we change subjects every 12 minutes And not only ranging on pro sports, but everything from billiards to duck hunting, believe it or not. So just about everything. uh, But we survived. And, you know, it it was a great growth period for me. And that led to 15 years in the market. Then I left for the University of Michigan, Go Blue. And four years there. And from Michigan, I went to the Raptors, as you mentioned. I was there for 10 years doing first radio and then television. Mm-hmm. And then have been with the Bulls since 2008. Awesome. So, um, so you had stated that your favorite time or your favorite moment to commentate for the Raptors was actually your very first broadcast, which was also Vince Carter's very first game. Um, so I want to ask you, what was your favorite Vince Carter moment to call? Wow. Well, there's yeah. so many. I mean, you know, right. like his rookie year when he won rookie of the year it was a truncated schedule it was a lockout year of 98 99 where we played like 50 games in 99 days it was like bizarre we had three three trips where we did back to back to back three games in three nights at the nba level i mean these players were completely on fumes by the time that third game was played in as many nights but vince brought it i mean it was a sensational impactful rookie season and so you know i mean just his in a period of less than one week span Mm -hmm. he beat boston at boston and the clippers in la uh, on a last second shot and to me that was magnificent it was unbelievable right so i mean when i look back at vince's career um you know as a raptor yeah, with Tracy McGrady, I thought had they stayed together in the Eastern Conference, oh, yeah. uh, building around those two, one was 21, the other was 20. Yeah. Um, there's no limit where this club could have gone. But as we know, McGrady left for Orlando as a free agent, and we would have, should have, could have. I know, and right? You can't, <laughs> you can't base, you can't base a career, or you can't have the vision for something that never happened. Right, exactly. No, yeah. They would have definitely been like a deadly duo. But um, so obviously you're in Toronto for a long time. And then, so was it kind of bittersweet seeing the Raptors win in 2019? Well, actually, I was very happy because I know so many people in Toronto that are still there after having left in 2008. Mm -hmm. So I I really don't think that way regarding bittersweet. Right. In, in all candor, and I know where the question's coming from, where, yeah. you know, d- did you want them to lose? Did you right. want them not to advance? <laughs> you know, I, that's not the way I'm wired. Right. Um, I want good things to happen. Mm-hmm. And it happened for the owner, Larry Tannenbaum, 
is a magnificent human being mm -hmm. and his wife, Judy. Those are two of the finest people I've ever met in my life. So I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the front office. I know Masai Ujiri. Oh, and yeah. okay. I mean, just the people involved with the organization. So I'm glad they beat the uh, Warriors, even yeah. though obviously <laughs> Golden State was banged up. But the right, truth definitely. of the matter is, Kawhi Leonard was not nearly 100% in that series. And while it was great having Kawhi on the floor, yeah. compared to other players on Golden State who are sidelined, then of course Durant got hurt in the series. Uh, yeah. Truth of the matter is you play and you compete with what you have on right. the roster, on the active roster. And so, again, you know what? Bottom line is Raps won it. Right, definitely, yeah. And what a big win it was for Toronto, you know, just in general. Um, they definitely deserve that. So a little bit more about Toronto. Um, so you were able to call that 81-point game by Kobe Bryant. Um, how is that like just seeing his uh, scores like add up each quarter, you know, like how did it feel in the arena and stuff? Well, I mean, the arena, let me tell you what, it was a Sunday night game, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. Raptors weren't a very good team. You look at the Lakers roster, and it was Kobe. I mean, you did have Lamar Odom, but, I mean, we had a lot of Chris Mim and Smosh <laughs> Parker. Yeah. And, you know, Kobe, I'll tell you what, the Raptors were in front early third quarter by like 18 points, okay. and the arena was dead. I mean, it was just, <laughs> you know, there was no energy, okay. no synergy of, you know, just hey, nothing at all. the Lakers, <laughs> Showtime nothing yeah and then all of a sudden there was a play where kobe came up with a steal at midcourt went the length of the floor and dunked it and that was the turning point in that game right and then all of a sudden you know i'm looking at the monitor in front of us we have a, a monitor with the individual stats and scores and team oh, okay. results and i'm looking at kobe's line and it grew and all of a sudden, from 43 points, it was 52. And from 52, <laughs> it was to 66. And Jeez, all of a just sudden, kept going on. it started to mount and wow. grow and escalate. And right. before you know it, he's at the foul line. He's got 79 points. And the crowd is going, 80, 80, wow. Kobe, Kobe. <laughs> and wow. you know, there's, and listen, had he missed those free throws? And left with 79. It's still oh. 79 points. But there's yeah. something about seeing that Just, eight. Right. Oh. And so good for him. Yeah, no, that's just a ridiculous stat line. It's like, I don't know if it, you know anyone can replicate it in today's game. You know, it's just hard to grasp that. You know what I yeah. mean? Well, I mean, so, if anyone's going to do it, it'll be a Harden, maybe right. a Durant, but a Harden. Uh, a Booker, somebody with the ball in his hands right. like, all the time. And yeah. I mean, Booker did have seven, oh, yeah. seven in a game against yeah. Boston. So he is he is on the cusp. Right. But definitely. I mean, it depends on the roster, depends on the game itself, depends yeah. on the opposition. Um, you know, the Raptors kind of sent everyone at Kobe. We really mm -hmm. didn't double team them. We really didn't trap them. Right. We played a lot of ISO ball. We played uh, sometimes we played a box and went on him, mm -hmm. but I mean, Kobe was Kobe and right. that night yes. will probably be of all the games I've done in the NBA, just because of the significance of number one, who accomplished it, Kobe right. Bryant, exactly. and then to see how this game turned quickly from an 18 point deficit to Kobe with the steal, the slam, and then yeah. Kobe, a one man gang, listen, Everybody in the arena and the Raptors players, the Lakers players knew right. Kobe was going to get the ball in his hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. So um, the next question I have for you is, uh, so you've been with the Chicago Bulls for a while now. Uh, what's the difference in fan base and crowds between Toronto and Chicago? Uh, initially, when I first came to the Raptors, they were in their third year of existence. And they were still kind of learning the game. But let me tell you what, we, you know, we talked earlier about Vince. Mm -hmm. Vince put basketball on the map in Canada. Oh, yeah. He was by far the most popular player in Toronto. And mm -hmm. I say that reverently because Matt Sundin, 
um, Cujo, these were great players right. with, um, you know, with, with what we saw, whether it was with the Leafs, whether it was with the Raptors, whether it was uh, Carlos Delgado right. and Roy Holiday with the uh, Toronto um, um, Blue Jays. Yeah. Sorry about that. I, I oh, thought no, my you're... mic went off for a second. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> so, but you, you had the Leafs, the Maple Leafs, the Blue Jays, yeah. you had the Toronto Argonauts, which really, I mean, Pinball Clemens, extremely popular. But the bottom line is Vince put basketball on the map. So the fan base and the arena was going crazy every night. I mean, yeah. he was a draw. I mean, he was must see not only TV, he was must but see this, NBA. Yeah. But then you come to Chicago and after the Jordan era, you know, the Bulls struggled. You know, they mm -hmm. flirted with some, you know, year here, year there. But for the most part, this was a a painstaking rebuild of yeah. Bulls. And then they get lucky, of course, and the draft is all about with the lottery, luck with ping pong balls. Right. And right. the Bulls won it. And so they get Rose, and you mm. know the rest of the story. All right, exactly. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the Chicago Bulls now. Uh, so you recently posted a video on your Instagram. It said, don't sleep on the 2021-22 Chicago Bulls. Uh, do you think we've been getting disrespected by the media in general, uh, just kind of uh, overlooking us, even though we've made such great signings? Well, I, I think there's a difference between overlook and disrespect. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think you've got to earn respect in everything right. in life. Definitely. So I, I don't believe the Bulls have been disrespected. Mm -hmm. I think you are who you are. Right. And this team has labored. I mean, to be quite you know, candid about things. I mean, right. you've got to win and exactly. to be respected and to be on national TV, even though I think this club deserves uh, a game on national TV, either opening mm -hmm. night or right. Christmas. I do think this club, but you got to earn it. So right. on one hand, while I do believe because of the changes our tourists and Mark have made in the front office and because of the incoming players we have, I mean, we aren't talking about guys who have just, you know, been a, a journeyman type player. I mean, right. last year it was Vooch. This year, you know, Lonzo Ball has an incredible upside. Yeah, And then definitely. you've got DeMar DeRozan. I love Caruso. I mean, you have Patrick Williams. These are really good NBA players. Yep. Williams, of course, hasn't reached that level of Vucevic or DeMar DeRozan. But, I mean, I think, I think Patrick Williams has a chance to be – a spectacular talent in the yeah. NBA. So on one hand, while I'm disappointed that the Bulls are not on national TV to the extent where I think they should be, yeah. I understand it. Yeah. So that's that's one category. When I said don't sleep on the Bulls, because I think a lot of people are thinking, well, this club will probably make the play-in game and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. I think this team, and again, we're talking about right now, we're recording this interview in right. late August. So yeah. a lot of things can happen with the roster, injuries. We'll see what happens come the third week in April. Yeah. But I believe this team has a chance to make some noise in the Eastern Conference. To Absolutely. what degree and how much, I'm not sure. But I think that for people to say, well, this is an 11th place ball club, they are much better than that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, uh, I was watching an interview with DeRozan and I kind of like really agree with it. He said everyone on the team is playing with a chip on their shoulder. You know, everyone is, like you said, kind of being overlooked. Zach Levine and Vucevic have been very underrated. They go kind of under the radar in terms of all-star players. DeRozan, they kind of just see as kind of wash. You know, they don't really talk about them in terms of best shooting guards. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is very exciting for Chicago. Uh, you know, especially, you know, being a Chicago fan, uh, it's going to be a season that a lot of fans are looking forward to. Um, so what I want to ask you next is, you know, Zach Levine went to the Olympics, mm -hmm. he won gold medal, and then Patrick Williams had a great performance uh, in summer league. Uh, so what do you think we can expect from these two, especially um, having played in summer? 
Well, I'm expecting Zach Levine to uh, return to the All-Star game in Cleveland again. I, yeah. I think he is just coming into his own, and that mm-hmm. window is very, very bright for Zach. He yeah. uh, is a hard worker. He has challenged himself in uh, elements of his game, i.e. defense, yeah. over the last couple of years to make himself a great player. Yeah. And to be a great, great player in this league, um, I think you've got to polish your offensive skills, yeah. obviously, but also you got to work on every element of your game. And I think Zach has. I'm very, very high on, on Levine. And yeah. in a pick and roll situation now with Vooch mm-hmm. and with Lonzo, I, I'm really excited about how Billy Donovan's going to orchestrate the pick and roll with the Bulls. Yeah, um, so, you know, I look at Vooch, uh, a very skilled, polished big man on the mm-hmm. offensive side and a really good defensive rebounder. So, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this roster and I know they've got to tweak it. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're probably looking still at some additions to the team. Mm-hmm. And again, we're doing this interview in late August and, and yeah. what happens with market and I'm not really sure. But I can tell you this ball club has certainly improved in the last 14, 15 months Mm -hmm. with our tourists and Mark. You see the roster then and the roster now. Yeah. And it's It's, like night and day. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, It's yeah, it's such a short amount of time, and they've done so much work. Uh that pick with Patrick Williams. I mean, everyone at first thought they're crazy, you know, they thought they fumbled it. Uh, but it turned out being one the better draft picks in that whole entire draft. Um, yep. So they've done such amazing work. Um, so uh, I read a tweet and it was Kendrick Perkins. And he had said uh, that Lonzo Ball was going to be the most improved player. Do, do you agree with that? Do you think he could uh, be a, a player of that caliber to well, be I, the most improved player? Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because the NBA gives the most improved player and it's a it's a terrific award to receive because it yeah. it shows the hard work you put in mm-hmm. and you've gone from here to here or here to here. Yeah. And I think every player needs to challenge himself, even if they've been all first team NBA mm-hmm. to improve. Right. Um, you know, as it, it's so hard to make an NBA roster. Yeah. It's harder to stay there. And there are you know, other than the sensational elite talent. There are a lot of players in the league that their role is you're going to be a bench guy. You may not play every night or you are a rotation player, but you're not going to play 35 minutes and you're going to come in and there are going to be games where you play 15 minutes. They're going to play four minutes. They're going to be games where you may have to start. There are going to be some games where you're probably going to walk out of the gym and you're going to be unhappy because you think you deserve more minutes. Every player thinks they should get more minutes. The end of the bench guys, listen, during the game, you don't think an end of the bench guy is saying to himself, Hey, you know what? I I could do a a really good job right now. Or I I wonder if the coach, you've got to be ready to play. When people say, do you know your role? I think that is important to understand But I think your role is you do what's best for the team, not for the back of the uniform, but the crest in front. No, yeah. So I think a guy like Lonzo Ball still has an upside, huge upside, and he'll be the first to tell you. And this is going to be a different team. You know, he had Ingram and he had Zion. And now he's coming to a team with some really good veteran players who have accomplished quite a bit. You know, Vooch, all-star, Levine, all-star, DeMar DeRozan, all-star. And you got to nurture, you know, Patrick Williams. So I think all these things are very positive. Yeah. Um, So, you know, people are saying about, you know, the fit of the Chicago Bulls and, you know, with DeRozan being added on, people are saying it's not the best fit. Are, Are you worried about that at all? Well, I always maintain the players figure it out. Yeah. And I mean, listen, DeMar DeRozan, this is in his first rodeo. Exactly. I mean, you yeah. know, he came into the league as a lottery pick for the Raptors, yeah. had some unbelievable seasons yeah. in Toronto. Yeah. And Masai had to make a tough, tough call. 
Sure. But no. Kawhi Leonard's out there. Kawhi Leonard's right. unhappy in San Antonio. You know, San Antonio saying, listen, we're just not going to give Kawhi Leonard away. Yeah. And we need an all-star back. Yeah. And so you got an all-star back. Rosen. And so DeMar DeRozan had some really good seasons he, with the Spurs. Right. And he earned the right to become a free agent. And yeah, definitely. You know, I'm sure DeMar DeRozan was looking at the roster and saying to himself, there's some opportunities here. Right. Now, does that mean that DeMar DeRozan is going to score 20 every night? You know, at the end of the day, these players want to win. Right. You know, DeMar DeRozan has made a ton of money and is going to make a lot of money in a Bulls uniform. Mm-hmm. Vooch is making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, Levine yeah. has made a lot of money and will continue to make a lot of money. You know, Lonzo Ball signed for a ton of money. So, yeah. you know what? At, at this point in a player's career, they have generational wealth. Mm-hmm. Now, the, now it's about winning. OK, Definitely. just win, put it together. You know, Billy Donovan is a superb coach. Just get it done. Period. Right. Exactly. You know, I think this is perfect because um, Aaron's like such a selfless player. So I think that they will work together perfectly. I think the connection went on. Well, Thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, unfortunately, Chuck's uh, connection cut off, so we weren't able to finish the interview. Uh, luckily, I got most of my questions through to him, uh, which is great. Um, so yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I have a NBA 2K22 uh, giveaway I'm doing, uh, so make sure to like this video, uh, comment on it as well, uh, comment your favorite question that I gave, uh, and then yeah. So we're going to do that, a little 2K22 giveaway for you guys. Um, and I appreciate you guys subscribing. It's been it's been unreal, the support you guys have been giving me uh, and the opportunities I've been given by Stacey King and now Chuck Sorsky uh, to interview them for my channel. Uh, it really is an awesome experience. Uh, like I said, I've been trying to get into the broadcasting field. Uh, so doing this is really helping me. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys stay safe. Uh, if Chuck comes back, then I'll edit it that he came back, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Have a good one, guys. See you.